So, how how do I even start? Where 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 do I even begin? Um, basically, if you had a theory in regards to the Gum Gum Fruit's real name, or whether or not Luffy was Joy Boy, or whether Luffy's connected to the sun god Nika, or, you know, why the world government is so hard-bent on making sure this devil fruit doesn't get caught, uh, it's all answered in the same question. <laughs> That's the crazy part. Um, yeah, so, uh, chapter, uh, sorry, <laughs> chapter 1044, The Warrior of Liberation. Luffy, uh, Luffy is Joy Boy. So, as, uh, as Zunisha is telling Momonosuke, Momo tells Yamato that, hey, Luffy is Joy Boy. That's what, that's what Zunisha is saying. Oh, I should probably mention the cover art. Um, it's the continuation of German Double Six, yada, yada, yada. Uh, you see there, uh, Niji and Yonji are about to be experimented on by some of Mama's kids. But really, you're not here for that. So we're just going to throw that away for a second. So <laughs> I was kind of right. Luffy doesn't actually... Luffy's not possessed by the spirit of Joy Boy. Luffy just takes on the mantle of Joy Boy because he ate this devil fruit. Luffy starts waking up. Uh, Sanji feels Luffy's presence. Marco feels Luffy's presence. Law, Kid... Everyone starts with observation hockey, starts sensing that Luffy is okay. And even Luffy himself is questioning it. Luffy's like, well, wait, why am I awake? Why, why am I, why do I feel so good? And why can't I stop laughing? <laughs> Luffy is laughing almost maniacal level here because everything seems so amusing to him. There's an endless joy on his face. And we get to cut to Marijoie, the Gorosei. And the five elders are talking about the devil fruit again. They risked angering Kaido. They lost some of their top agents over this. They have put a lot into this, and they're worried that they may have accidentally triggered something that can't be undone right now. Because apparently, it's as if the devil fruit itself has been avoiding them for 800 years. And apparently... Zone-type devil fruits have a will of their own. This answers a completely different question where most people wondered, why do zone-type devil fruits have the ability to be eaten by objects and then retain their own sort of sentience? This has been shown to us all the way since the beginning in Alabasta with, uh, you know, Lasso the dog. But zone-type devil fruits kind of have their own sentience. And zone-type devil fruits have their own willpower. Now, I know what you're thinking. Why am I talking about zone-type devil fruits? That's because the true name of the gum gum fruit is not the resin resin fruit, like so many other people were thinking, and I will not say myself included. I thought resin was kind of a silly idea. I thought it was cool, cool sounding, but... I didn't think it made sense for the gum gum fruit. Also, why 800 years ago would resin be so well known? No, but I didn't know what the real name was going to be, so I kind of kept my mouth quiet about it because... Not because I didn't want to be wrong, but because I didn't want to just say the same theory everyone else was saying. But the real name of the gum gum fruit is the human human fruit model Nika. It is a mythical zone-type devil fruit that turns the user's body into the sun god Nika. This property gives the abilities of rubber. So it is still the gum gum fruit, but it instead of having like a three-stage transformation, it works like a paramecia, where you're a man made of rubber. Either that or... You know, his mid-transformation was all his different uses of his gears, and then this is now his final transformation. To which Luffy himself calls it Gear Fifth. And he, even Luffy himself says, this is my pinnacle. So the Gorosei are worried about that because the way they worded it was, while it does give the user the properties of rubber, awakening it brings that rubber to the next level and allows the user to bring joy to the world. 
the only limit to this devil fruit is how creative its user is. And we all know how creative Luffy can be. My, their final wording for it makes me laugh. It truly is the most ridiculous devil fruit. Which is great, because when people asked Oda about the gum gum fruit, Oda said that he wanted the protagonist to have a ridiculous power. He wanted the protagonist to have something that was silly and fun to draw, so that no matter what situation Luffy was in, Oda could give Luffy something funny to do. Something that would bring smiles to people's faces and put joy, you know, back into this dull, bleak world that Luffy is living in. So Luffy is Joy Boy. What does that imply for Luffy? Well, we'll get to that as we segue a little bit for a moment. We're going to segue into Hiyori talking to Orochi because, you know, you can't have the whole chapter dedicated to this big revelation. We got to have some other things going on. So Orochi is pleading to Hiyori for his life because the rubble's on top of him and the building's coming down and he doesn't have his devil fruit power right now. And Hiyori basically tells him, screw you, you're going to die here. And she even takes off her mask and he can see the tears in her eyes, the rage in her face as she pro proudly proclaims, I am Kozuki Hiyori. And this is where you're going to die because, you know, you're trapped. But uh, the little ghost, the little uh, Conjuro, little flame monster thing Conjuro made shows up. And he's like, Orochi, I have failed you. And he goes, oh good, Conjuro, your little ghost thing. Go, burn Hiori alive. And it just like keeps coming closer to him. And he's like, what are you doing? Orochi. <laughs> and it, it just like cuddles him. And since it's just flame incarnate, it engulfs him in fire. And he's just screaming in pain. It's actually kind of dark considering all the happy moments going on in this chapter. But regardless, um, it's kind of the pitiful, sad ending that Orochi deserves. I, I know it would be satisfying to see Zoro take him down or Momonosuke take him down. But let's be honest with ourselves. Is Orochi really worth the time? Especially when so many more, more important things are going on than the death of some whiny shogun. So of course the chaos going on outside of that is starting to amplify until Kaido hears from above laughter. And this explosion of Conqueror's hockey takes out way more people than it usually does. Or at least I believe it does because, you know, Kaido notices his men falling over and some of them say, whoa, Conqueror's Hockey, where's this coming from? Usually when somebody uses Conqueror's Hockey, you can feel who it's coming from. You, you can see the person who's using it. So the fact that Luffy is all the way up here and he is knocking out people all the way down there without them even being able to see him shows just how powerful Luffy is right now. And before Kaido can even respond, a giant hand comes bursting through the ceiling, grabs Kaido like a sausage, and yanks him back up. Luffy flings him around the battlefield over and over again, switching forms, gigantifying his body, and just <laughs> walloping Kaido left and right. Then Kaido, realizing, you know, he's got, you know, Luffy on his hands, he sends the blast breath and as the fire is coming towards Luffy he get he does this like comical you know eyes popping out of his head and he grabs the ground in front of him and he lifts it up and the ground like rubber bounces the attack back at Kaido so not like other paramecias where you can, you know, you cause things around you. Luffy was directly touching this ground, but Luffy can give the properties of rubber to other things, a power of the sun god Nika, apparently. So as Luffy bounces it back, and him and Kaido, you know, they take like a, a couple seconds to relax, we finally see the true form of Gear 5th. And Kaido tells Luffy, Hey, you're alive. That's good. I'm really sorry about what happened before. You know, that guy is not even a problem anymore. And Luffy looks at him and he's, he's got this, 
it's not villainously wild, but he's got a wild look in his eye. And he's just like, no problem, don't worry about it, let's get back to the fight. So the next few chapters are going to be this fight between Luffy awakened in Gear 5th with the true power of, this is going to take a while to get used to, the true power of the human-human fruit Nika model, or model Nika, however you want to say that. But uh, normally I, I uh, take notes when I do chapter summaries and stuff, but I actually, I just read the chapter because I wanted to give my fresh off-the-head thoughts. So if I missed something in the chapter, I apologize for that. I usually ramble when I just first read it. I ramble at my brother, I annoy him for a bit, and then I sit down, take my notes, and give my usual chapter summary. Altogether, though, this reveal helps encompass so many different things and make and make them make sense. Like, Luffy's body being made of rubber makes sense that he could, you know, start pumping his blood through his heart, and, you know, a heart would normally be able to take that, not be able to take that, but a rubber heart could. But the, guy, the gigantification, I know we all joke and say, like, okay, it's anime logic, but how could Luffy actually inflate himself by blowing into his thumb without actually cutting himself? And then as for Gear 4, that's even crazier. But these are all powers of the human-human fruit. Model Nika. So where do we go from here? That's the question. Yeah, Revealing that Luffy had a mythical zone fruit all this time isn't... That isn't bad. I, I don't... I actually... This is actually... Probably the one, well, I don't know. I don't know where we go from here. So I'm looking forward to the next chapter. I hope you are too. And uh, yeah, thanks for watching as always. And I will see you in the next video. This is the Hero of Julios, Xing out.